In this video, I'm going to go through the 10 steps that you need to take when editing a documentary film. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. All right, I'm going to preface this video by saying that documentaries are one of my favorite things to edit. I've cut five full length films and tons of short ones and I spent years editing reality TV shows which are kind of like mini documentaries. And if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that there are some very basic universal steps that all documentary film editors take, and you should take them too. So get ready to take some notes and let's dive in. Here are the 10 steps that you need to take when editing documentary films. Step one, make an outline. First, make sure you have an outline for your film. Ideally, you should have written down a rough outline for your documentary film before you even started filming. But if you didn't, don't sweat it. We're going to do it now. Your outline should have three acts. Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Act 1 is where you introduce your main character and set up what their problem or challenge is. Ideally, in Act 1, there's also something that happens to set the whole film in motion. That's your inciting incident. Act 2 is where they confront that problem, and ideally, they fail a couple times when they're trying to overcome it, and they almost give up hope. And Act 3 is where they finally achieve their goal, overcoming that obstacle. Or at least you have some sort of satisfying ending if they don't and hopefully they've evolved in some way since the film's beginning. Now, this is a gross abbreviation of a classic three-part story structure. For more information about story structures, check out my video on how to create a good three-act film. I'll leave a link in the description. But at least this gives you a rough roadmap. All right, so after you've written your rough outline, Step two, make sure your drive is organized. You should have the following folders on your drive, organized like so. I'm just gonna hold this frame here so that you can pause the video and make sure your folders look like this. Just do it, you'll stay organized and your edit will go way faster because you won't be looking for stuff. After you've made these folders, drag the footage you shot into your video folder, put your music in the music folder and so on. Step three, make sure your Premiere project is organized. Open Premiere. I'm working in Premiere version 22.5.0, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. Once Premiere is open, I want you to create the following folders and organize them accordingly. To create a new folder, hit Command B on a Mac, Control B on a PC, or click this folder icon. Again, I'm going to hold this frame here for a second so that you can pause the video and make sure your folders look like this. Okay, so once you have these folders, let's bring in your media. Open your video folder and import your shoot footage, and so on. Make sure everything is going into the correct folder. Step four, create an interview string out. Before you start editing anything together, it's important to go through all of your footage and see what you've got and organize it accordingly so that when you start editing, you don't waste time and energy digging around to find your interview bites. So once the footage is in, create a sequence that contains all of your interviewees' answers organized by topic. This is called a string out. First, create a sequence that matches the settings of your clips by dragging one of your interview clips to your empty timeline. Rename your sequence to your film's title and then put string out at the end. Then drag your string out sequence to your zero sequences folder. Okay, delete that clip from your timeline and let's start creating your string out. Click on your first video clip, set your in and out points around your subject's first answer, and edit it into your sequence. Make sure that you're putting their dialogue on tracks one and two. Tracks three and four are for music and five and six are for your sound effects. This is not only industry standard, but organizing your audio tracks like this will make things go way faster. Then make a title card saying what he or she is talking about. 
put it right before your clip in the timeline and drag that title card up to video layer 2 so that it stands out. Now you're going to repeat this process by going through all of your footage and grouping clips that are all about the same topic together, each with a title card at the top on video layer 2 describing what the group is about. Once you've gone through all of your footage and grouped and labeled all your topics in your string out, the last part of the string out is to look at the outline that you created and look at what you have in your string out timeline. Then reorder your grouped clips so that your topics are roughly in the same order as your outline. It doesn't have to be exact, but try and put things roughly in the order that they would appear in your film. Step 5. Create a B-roll string out. Once you've gone through all of your interview footage, now it's time to go through all of your B-roll footage. Do the same thing that you did for your interview clips. Create a new sequence, call it B-roll. Then do a string out of the B-roll by grouping clips together by subject, location, or topic. Step 6. Edit a rough cut. Once you've gone through all of your interviews and your B-roll, it's time to edit your rough cut. First, duplicate your string out sequence by highlighting it and going to the edit menu and selecting duplicate. Rename your new sequence to your film's title and put rough cut at the end. Now, go through your sequence and remove any interview bites that are not interesting or don't serve your story. Remember, if you need to go back and find a clip, you still have it in your string out sequence. So be ruthless. Lose anything that's boring or doesn't work for the story. Don't worry right now about cutting out ums or ahs. Just leave the clips fat. Lastly, you can remove your titles from your sequence and move everything together. Step 7. Edit a revised cut. B-roll, music, sound effects. Once your rough cut is done, duplicate that sequence again and rename the new one to your film's title and put revised cut after it. Load the revised cut sequence into your timeline and watch your sequence from beginning to end and make sure the order is working. Make sure you're telling your story clearly and that only the very best quotes are in. Now you can cut out any ums or ahs that people are saying or edit out any times where they repeat themselves. Once you've done the above, you can now stick all of your B-roll and images over your edits. Remember, you want to choose B-roll or images that illustrate what your subject is talking about. Don't pick random images just to cover the edits. Also, sometimes the B-roll will have dialogue or important information in it. Put those clips in the proper place and let them stand on their own. That's called a sound up. Then add your music. Make sure all of your music is going on tracks 3 and 4. As mentioned, this is industry standard. And make sure your music tracks all have endings edited on them, or that they fade out in the very least. Don't just let your track cut out. And lastly, once you've added all your music, add any sound effects that you have. The sound effects should all be on tracks 5 and 6. Once that's all done, your sequence should look and sound pretty close to your final film. The only thing you're missing are titles and graphics and a final audio mix and color correct. Step 8. Edit a fine cut. Titles. Once you've done your revised cut, it's time to add all of your graphics and titles for the fine cut. Duplicate your revised cut sequence, rename the new one to your film's title and put fine cut after it. Then put in all your titles. Importantly, before you work with any titles, make sure you have your title safety overlay on. In Premiere, go to the wrench menu in the lower right of your program tab and scroll down to safe margins and make sure there's a check mark by it. The outer box here is action safe. Make sure none of the action on your screen is happening outside of this box. And the inner box here is title safe. Make sure your titles don't go beyond the inner box. Now add titles, or chirons as they call them in the business, to your subjects, so the audience knows who's speaking and what their relation to your story is. You only need to chiron your subject once at the top of your film. You don't need to keep showing their title every time you see them. In television, you would chiron a subject again after every commercial break or at the top of every act, but in a film you can just chiron them once at the top of the film. Make sure you hold your title for at least three seconds, no less fade it on and off. The subject's name usually goes on the top in larger font and their title goes beneath that, usually in smaller font. Locations are usually in small font in the upper left or right of the screen and footage credits are usually in the lower right or lower left in small font. Once you've put in all your titles and everything's been approved by your producer, director, and executive producer, you now have what is called a picture lock, meaning that you don't plan to make any changes to your picture. 
Make sure that everyone understands this or you'll be wasting time backtracking. Now you're ready to mix and color correct your final film. Step 9. Do an audio mix. From this point on, you're only going to be working on one final sequence. Duplicate your fine cut sequence one last time. Rename the new one to your film's title and put FINAL in all caps after it. Put a zero at the top of it so that it rises to the top when you sort alphabetically. And before you do your audio mix, make sure all your audio is organized on the correct tracks. Remember, dialogue goes on tracks 1 and 2, music is on 3 and 4, and sound effects are on 5 and 6. Next, open your audio meters by going to window and making sure there's a check mark by audio meters and play down your sequence from the beginning adjusting the volume in the effect controls tab on every single clip like so overall your audio level should hover at around negative six decibels if it's in the red above negative six it's too loud if it's in the yellow around negative 12 it's too soft when you're hearing only music in your film your level should be around negative six when someone is talking and there's music behind them, lower your music so that you can hear the dialogue clearly. This usually means lowering the music track to negative 19 or negative 23 decibels in order for the dialogue to be heard. Repeat this process for every clip until you reach the end. I usually shrink my program tab like so, so that I'm not distracted by the video. Once the whole sequence is mixed, it's time to do your final step, the color correct. Step 10, do a color correct pass. I have a whole video on color correction, which I'll link in the video description below. It will help you understand what each scope measures and how to get a great looking image by using them. So I highly recommend taking a moment to watch it. In the meantime, I'll outline a very quick and basic color correction technique here so that you can use it if you're just starting out. Color correction is the process of making sure all of your video looks properly exposed and it includes colors that are not too saturated or too washed out. First, make sure you have your Lumetri scopes and Lumetri color tabs open by going to Window and making sure there's a check mark by both. In the Lumetri scopes tab, click on the wrench menu and make sure there are check marks by Vector Scope YUV and Waveform RGB. Then, park your playhead on your first video clip. Look at your RGB waveform. All of your levels should be below 100 IRE and above 0 IRE. If either are touching 100 or 0, adjust them by moving the sliders by whites and blacks in the Lumetri color tab. You can also adjust your shadows and highlights to bring out a little more detail if you have some time. But as long as your whites and blacks are within legal limit, you're in a better place than before. Next, take a look at your vector scope here. And if your white signal here is just a little ball in the center, adjust your saturation in the Lumetri color tab under Creative to boost the saturation. As a general rule, I usually don't go beyond 109 when I'm boosting saturation because things start to look too saturated. And you want to make sure that you don't go beyond the bounding area here. And lastly, if you look at a clip and notice that it's really blue, orange, or red, you can go to the wrench menu in the Lumetri Scopes tab, open the Parade RGB, and take a look at the levels for each individual color. Ideally, all of these mountains should be around the same height. If you see one is higher than the others, go to the Lumetri Color tab, click on Curves, and select the color that needs to be adjusted here at the top, and drag the dot at the end of the line either up or down until you see all the mountains approaching the same height in the Parade RGB scope. Okay, so repeat this color correction process until you reach the end of your sequence. And once you're done, play your sequence down from beginning to end to make sure that everything looks and sounds perfect. View it on a large monitor or play it full screen by clicking on your program tab and hitting the accent key in the upper left. Once you've watched it a few times preferably and all is looking good, you're ready to export your final. All right, before we go, let's do a quick review. Here are the 10 steps you need to take when editing a documentary film. Make an outline. Make sure your drive is organized. Make sure your premiere project is organized. Create an interview string out. Create a B-roll string out. Edit a rough cut. Edit a revised cut. B-roll, music, sound effects. Edit a fine cut, titles, do an audio mix, and do a color correct pass. 
And that's it. Good luck to all you documentary filmmakers out there. And if you end up using this method and your film is online, stick a link to it in the comments so that we can all check it out. All right, as always, if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted. And I will catch you next time.